welcome your league fans to a very special episode, the fourth episode of A Quarter with Kyle Hines. Today, our special guest um, is one of the best competitors, one of the hardest working players in your league. You know, one of my favorite guys to go against, you know, every single night because I know that when I go against him, I'm going to have to bring it because I know he's definitely going to bring it. Um, Cheska, for, Cheska Moscow's forward, Toko Singelia. Toko, how's everything? Good, man. Good. Uh, thanks for uh, such a special introduction, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Now, first of all, man, I just want to say, um, you know, you like I said, man, you're definitely one of my favorite people and definitely one of my favorite, you know, guys to go against in your league just because your your competitive spirit, your competitive nature. Um, I know when I play against you that, you know, I have to bring it, I have to be my best. So, um, you know, where where do you get that that competitive nature from? Like where where does that come from? Uh uh first of all, before I say that, I wanna say that the same goes for you, man. Uh honestly, uh uh, ever since we start to play against each other, you know, like ever since I came back from uh, BA and we play you guys, I know that uh, you were going to guard me and I was going to guard you, you know, like most of the times. And uh, uh, like you said, I had to bring it too, you know. And I think uh, it started from my, it's just like genetics, you know, both my parents mm-hmm. play basketball, both of them very competitive uh, persons, you know, and uh, I think from the day one, that's the only way I knew it. You know, there was no shortcuts. There was no anything uh, easy for me or for uh, for op- opponent. You know, so uh, I knew it that every game, if you don't bring it and if you don't do it, everything more than hundred percent. Like there was, there was not a satisfaction. You know? mm-hmm. So there was the only way I I knew how to do it uh, since I was a kid. So it's it's uh, still still it's in me, and I, I'm doing it like this. You know? Now, time has been flying by, you know, throughout the season. You know, we're, we look up already and we're already at almost at the halfway point of the regular season. Um, and, you know, so how how have you seen the first part of the season, you know, kind of through your eyes and kind of through the team eyes at, uh, at Cheska? This season is, you know, it's kind of weird, strange season. Like most of the games we play without fans and like, uh, uh, you know, like uh, – all the restrictions restrictions we have, you know, and uh, everything with the, what, what, what's going on in the world with the virus. But I still want to give the credit to uh, EuroLeague to organize such a tournament, you know. It's not it's not very easy, you know, and it's yeah, like no. uh, so many teams and so many countries involved and to still organize this and play, you know, like on the higher higher level, is, uh, highest level, is, it's, it's amazing, you know. So, but in the end of the day, like, uh, we are adaptive people, you know, the players that can adapt and... Uh, uh, in the end of the day, all we want to do is uh, be a professional and play play basketball games, you know. And uh, uh, I think when when that's your goal, you know, like uh, it becomes a little bit much easier, you know. And uh, so far, so good. I could say like this, you know. So hopefully, from the second part of the season, many things going to change. But uh, most of the biggest thing I want to to change is uh, is to bring the fans uh, back back on the, on the gym. You know? Definitely, I, mean, I think that's something that we we are hoping, 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 and also you know wishing for. Now, speaking of high level, you know, you and your your teammates over at Cheska Moscow are playing at a very high level right now. You're leading the table, um, and you know have had you know a, a, a commanding winning streak um, throughout this part of the season. Has it surprised you, you know, being that you know not only you but you know Nikolov Maritinov and you know um, you know trying to adjust to a new team and a new system. Has it surprised you that you guys have been able to gel so fast and been able to, you know, play so well so uh, so early? Uh, it's 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 a little funny because I think I think we're still adjusting. You know, I mm-hmm. think the people people okay saying that okay we're number one, we win so many games, uh, we win so many games in uh, in a row. You know, but like what they don't realize, like we we still you know, reach the, reach our potential, you know, and mm-hmm. I think the best, best part is yet to come, you know, and, uh, uh, like, like Nico also, like, he's also, I know he's playing great basketball right now, but like, I, I feel like he's not still his full, full potential, mm-hmm. you know, me also, like I'm, st- I'm still in adjust adjusting mode. Me and you have a lot in common, you know, we, after spending, you know, so much time with one club, you know, me, I was in, you know, Cheska for the last seven years and you've been in Basconia for the last, uh, six years. 
Um, you know, we both, you know, made decisions to, you know, take our start a new chapter in our careers. So was it difficult for you um, to leave? And, you know, once you, you know, once you made the decision to leave Wisconsin, um, you know, what type of feelings and what type of emotions did you have? Uh, it was it was not easy. I would put it like that. You know, it was not easy. Uh, but definitely to leave uh, winning the championship uh, in Spain, uh, that uh, really lived me a little bit, you know, like, so mm -hmm. I'm leaving the club that, uh, you know, like ever since I came there, my goal was to, my and my dream was to uh, bring the championship uh, to the city, you know, because those people, man, that the fans, man, they're amazing. There is like, they deserve all the best, man, you know, and the organization uh, from my first year to my last year, the way they grew, like organization, it was amazing, you know, mm -hmm. so like, uh, I, I, I felt like I felt like I gave the, all I had, and they gave the, all they had to me. You know, and uh, I think like there was a time, perfect time to to move on and uh, leave uh, to the, another chapter, you know, another challenges. Because I think uh, after this year, I, I was kind of getting in the point where I was kind of getting the in the comfort, comfort, getting too comfortable, you know. So yeah, like, that's what I wanted. You know, that's that's what I wanted to. Uh, avoid, you know, and mm -hmm. now I, I was looking for new challenges, you know, so I wanted to come in one of the best teams uh, in EuroLeague and try to, you know, win some more titles, you know. Now, you talked about this new chapter. What are you looking for the most and what are your biggest, you know, goals that you have in this new chapter of your career? Uh, to be honest, individually, I wanted to see, you know, like, because it's a big challenge for me. Individually, mm -hmm. it's a very big challenge. Uh, it's 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 harder than I thought it would be uh, to adjust to it, you know. That's why I said I'm still adjusting, you know. So I, I still wanted to put myself in this uh, challenging position where I can still grow, you know. Like uh, now it's all a uh, whole different uh, challenges for me and like whole different things I have to uh, learn and, you know, like to grow and, and uh, individual, that's, that's what I want to do. And also uh, the biggest goal is to win the EuroLeague, you know. And, uh, I think uh, where I am right now, it's uh, pretty, pretty high. The chances are pretty high to do it, you know. So our first first goal is, you know, like to get get to the final four, and then you know, like anything can happen there. Now, Victoria is a big difference between Moscow. Um, you know, the city. You know, Victoria is a little bit more, I guess you could say, uh, a little bit slower pace compared to Moscow, which is more of, you know, a big city. You know, so what was the most difficult adjustments for you? I can speak to, for me, it was it was the weather. You know, seven years ago when I came and I was coming from Athens where I was living on the beach and, you know, I was walking around with shorts and t-shirt. And what has been your, your biggest adjustment so far, you know, living in Moscow? Uh, I would say the uh, pretty much the same. Uh, first thing, we were we had a very big house uh, there with three kids, and now putting them in a, in an apartment is a big challenge. You know, <laughs> they're still acting like, like they're living in a big house, but no, it's not the same. Uh, and I'd, I'd, and another thing is uh, not when I say weather, not not like just a cold, because in Victoria in the winter time you, you, you could get really cold too, but like. Uh, just a daylight, like at 3 p.m. Yeah. or 4 p.m. It's, it's dark, you know, already. Yeah. And yeah, when you yeah. go into the practice already, it's like, uh, looks like it's a night. Yeah. You know? But it's, <laughs> it, 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 it has its ups and downs. Like uh, now we put the kids uh, to sleep a little early. So they think they think it's time to go. You know? like, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. I remember yeah. my daughter um, in almost the opposite. Like we used to put her to bed earlier. But then in the springtime when the sun rises, so the sun rises at like, you know, three, I think like three, four o'clock in the morning. So my, my daughter would wake up and be like, OK, I'm ready for the day. And be like, it was five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> now, is there is there something about Moscow that has surprised you? Um, you know, for me, it was just how beautiful the city was, especially now during this time in the January, December months with, you know, all the lights. If you go down to the Red yes. Square and you see yes. how Christmas and how everything. So is, what about the city that, you know, was the biggest surprise for you or even the organization at Cheska as well? Uh, I mean, I heard I heard a lot about the organization. You know, it's like top organization, like mm -hmm. kind of NBA style. So, you know, like uh, it was not really not a lot of surprises there because, you know, like they're really, really uh, uh, meet their potential, like uh, meeting, you know, like wh whenever the you guys when I 
I asked, you guys at the bar, like they meet there, mm -hmm. you know, like, and uh, it's a very, very tough organization. And as a Moscow man, it's uh, like you said, you know, like, uh, the, especially the New Year time, the Christmas time, it's, it's amazing, you know, so many yeah. lights, so many things to do. And the area we're living, it's so many parks for kids to go out and, yeah. you know, and uh, have some fun. And, uh, and, and the mall that we have also like close, like there's so much things to do with kids, you know. Uh, and just a variation of the restaurants and, you know, like it was a different, uh, that's a different from Victoria, you know, like, don't get me wrong, you can eat really, really well in Victoria, yeah. but you don't have that much variation, you know, uh, uh, but yeah, like just, it's, it's, it's totally different, man, you know, it's, it's, it's very different to be honest. Now you've had kind of a mini reunion with some of your Victoria teammates, um, Mike James, you played with Mike. You play with Darren Hillard, you play with Joe Voigtman. So how have they helped you, you know, in your transition? And then, you know, by having them there, did it make you feel more comfortable, um, you know, being there with some guys that you already know? Of course, it's it's much more comfortable, you know. And uh, before, even before I came here, I talked to Mike, I talked to Joe, you know. Uh, I talked to Dee, and they helped me, like, to give me an idea where to live, you know, and uh, how the traffic looks like, how the, the things that I have to look out, things that I have to, you know, like uh, take the note to, you know, and uh, they helped me a lot in that way also, but also to have them uh, back in the locker room, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun because uh, well, many times we, we go back to the Victoria days and we, we, we you know, talk about the many funny things that we, we have had uh, during the, those years and, uh, it's just fun, you know, to re reunite it like that. You know, it's it's not it's, it doesn't happen that often. You know? mm -hmm. Now, last before we get out of here, before we end the the quarter, um, what is your message to the to the Euroleague fans um, out there? Like you already spoke about, you know, this year um, has definitely been different. You know, where we haven't had the opportunity to play in front of them, and you know, it's been definitely been a big, you know, missing piece to the season. So, do you have a message for you know for all of them? If you guys think that you missed the game, you can. You can't imagine how much how much we miss you. So I hope that uh, we will meet again pretty soon, and uh, we're gonna have uh, a lot of fun together. All right, my guy, man, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank you for taking the time. You know, it was my day. pleasure, man. Um, man, stay healthy, stay well, um, and hopefully we'll, we'll meet again very soon. You too, man. Stay healthy and all the best. Thank you to all the Euroleague fans out there for watching. I um, hope you had a great time watching this episode. Thank you to my special guest, Toko Sangelia. Um, and we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode of A Quarter with Kyle Hines.